Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. We're back after what seems like forever, and I just kicked a hairdryer down on the ground. That was cool. There's so many cables around here. Uh, it's exciting to be back with you all, and we're going to be painting up one all-seeing Heimdall today for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, with that, let's just get this camera off of me because we got a lot of work to do. I got a rainbow to paint. I got a Heimdall to paint. We got lots of stuff to talk about probably. Let's just dive right into it. All right, here we go. So my Heimdall is all Zenith primed and ready. He is on the wrong size base, but I'm just using this because it was the one I had around and it made it really easy to hold while I was airbrushing it. So I know he's on the wrong base. His real base is right here with all of the awesome rainbow bridge effects. So I think we're gonna start just by painting the rainbow bridge first and then we'll dive into Heimdall. Um, I'm gonna be using some speed paints today on these from the Army Painter. I've got my red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So we're gonna be following our Roy G. Biv. We're gonna be going like crazy. This is not mini extravaganza too. This is just purely uh, weekly streams. So I don't think we've, we don't have new dates yet. We're working on that. We're finalizing everything. We're gonna figure it out. And then uh, BK and Summer will be making a post about all that. So uh, more information coming soon. Okay, so my main goal here is I'm just gonna pick, oh, what's Summer doing? <laughs> She's messing with the camera. I'm probably off. We have this new setup here. Um, so I'm just gonna pick a starting point, like let's say right here. And I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna do my red, and I'm just gonna do really simple stripes. And so this is gonna be a pretty classic, like Steve Ditko kind of rainbow bridge. It's gonna be pretty poppy and bright. Uh, there's definitely different ways to do this effect if you didn't want it to be quite as classically cartoony, I guess, in a way. Um, but the speed paints make this really easy and pretty simple to get everything through. And then before I forget, I'll come to the backside and I don't have to be perfect on this. So if I'm not lining it up like ideally, cause it is light and it's broken up in its bridge effects, we're just gonna knock that through, clean that out, go to our next color, which is gonna be our orange. And then again, we'll just kinda like come in Hit up some orange and then let those two speed paints kind of like mix together in the middle. And that'll give us some nice transitions. And we'll just kind of go through and do this throughout the whole of the circle. And if I get a little too crazy like I did there, it's pretty easy to come back and fix. So we do have some working time with this. And again, you don't have to worry about the sides being perfectly perfect because People aren't going to see it. I need to set up all my colors so I can do this really fast though. My blues, my blues, my blues. Somebody's just going to run the camera the whole time it looks like. Then my only trick here is I'm going to have to remember which color's which. So we'll see how well I do with that. Okay. Now I got all my colors out. Am I on camera? Summer, are you happy? Oh, I'm not going to start for a minute. Hey, camera. Come in with our yellow. It is, it's fancy new, <coughs> excuse me, camera for mini extravaganza. There's a yellow, then we got our G. Come in and hit that. And then I'm just gonna replicate this pattern, this classic elementary school light pattern. Cause that's, I mean, I assume that's how everyone remembers what colors there are in, in light and rainbows is Roy G. Biv. I learned that so, so long ago. Much like King Philip came over for ginger snaps, it's been incredibly useful in my life of not sciencey stuff. Get the green, then we go to the blue. Meld that in. You know, you could take a whole lot of time. There's, uh, we were talking about kind of ways to replicate the effect that you see in like the MCU movies where the bridge is kind of more shimmery, a little more like glass. Um, and I think you could accomplish that by doing similar, like a similar idea to what we're doing here with 
the speed paints or you could use inks for this and, and glazes. And instead of doing it over white, you could do it over like a really white metallic. For example, like speed metal. Well, that's brown. Did I grab the wrong color? Oh no, maybe that's purple. That's purple, okay. It's just real dark. So then I get to that. And then from there, I just go back and I start repeating the process again. So over violet, then we're gonna go back to our red. We'll go back to our orange. Back to our yellow. And then if you wanna go back in and sharpen stuff up, you can always do, you know, more colors and stuff. So let's do the back side here. Get this yellow. Gonna knock that out. Get our green in there. Wow. Gonna do that. Kind of using the top colors that I can see on the side, but also not super worrying about matching it perfectly because again no one's going to really put the screws to this thing on both sides <clears throat> if it was going into like a worthy competition or something I'd probably be a little more specific about <coughs> excuse me a whole lot of things but that's not today we're just painting a cool rainbow bridge for our cool Heimdall to get on the table and start having some fun with RS Guardians. And you gotta be sure to come back next week. Dallas is gonna be painting Scourge. <clears throat> so you can get the full gamut of As Guardians that were announced over our reveal week from the unfortunately postponed mini extravaganza. But again, got lots of plans in the works coming your way. For the makeup and as soon as we have final dates on everything we will be sure to let you all know it should be a good time the fun thing that's happening is thursday oh yeah we can talk about that so one of the big things that we we're going to do at mini stravaganza obviously um we had some game streams planned we we're going to be holding one of the game streams for legion on Thursday so you can come in and check that out yellow gotta go green um, so you can come in check that out it's gonna be our game developers uh, Andrew Dursum and Will Pagani squaring off against each other it should be a very good time a lot of fun there and if you want to take a look at some of the recently revealed and released stuff in action it'll be a great place to do that Don't miss it. Mark it down. It'll be our first gameplay stream in quite a while as well, uh, which is pretty exciting to be able to get back into. Am I too far down? Feel like I am. I feel like I am. <laughs> it's very fancy. It's like got its own TV screen on it and everything. You've leveled up, Summer. Whether you like, whether you like it or not, you've leveled up. Uh, so the gameplay stream on Thursday will kind of be the last of the big initial mini extravaganza postponement reveals. We do have a whole bunch of stuff that obviously we kept in our back pocket uh, from the initial mini extravaganza panels and all of that stuff. So we wanted to give some of the more timely and important uh, content in terms of upcoming releases and news. But we didn't want to give it all away because um, there's still a lot more cool stuff to talk about. So, uh, as far as kind of the initial batch of reveals and everything, those all happened last week, culminating with today's RG and then, of course, Thursday's game stream. And then from there, it'll kind of go back to business as usual. 
until we finalize our new dates for the mini extravaganza makeup. And then we will be showing off all the stuff that we didn't yet reveal and some new stuff as well. So it's kind of like you're getting too many extravaganzas for the price of one in a lot of ways. So that's pretty exciting. A lot of good stuff here. All right, and then we gotta go to our green. I'm just gonna start making my pans a little bit bigger here. Oh, we gotta come up with that yellow. This is our tall one. <laughs> it was really fun to work on this overall like rainbow bridge design and stuff when we were concepting and talking about Heimdall and what we kind of wanted to accomplish with him. We knew having the rainbow bridge be kind of part of his overall design and look was really important. And, uh, you know, it became this whole thing of like, okay, well, what kind of effect does that look like? Like what's going to translate well into miniature form? And we did take some inspiration from, you know, some various comics, some of the modern stuff, some of the classic stuff, and then a little bit from the MCU. And we kind of designed this hybrid bridge that obviously one of the things we were always looking at was like paintability. And as you can see here, you can get a really cool effect pretty easily um, by utilizing some of these fancy speed paints, high contrast painting, um, anything like that. Because there's just a lot of texture a lot of real nice high contrast area for washes and stuff to grab onto. And you can go as, you know, as bright as you want to, you can go as desaturated as you want to, you can not follow rainbows at all, you know, just go crazy in some other ways. But it's a really fun, this is like the third rainbow I think I've painted now. <laughs> and every time I kind of do it a little different, um, but it's a really fun kind of break way to do it. Uh, Simone's pretty good about the donuts when it comes to mini extravaganza, so I'm going to say that yes, we're going to see some donuts on mini strav. And then we're going to get like really crazy here because you can see I'm completing my circle and I didn't plan it out perfectly, but that's okay because I can just kind of cheat it and skip some colors here and go straight into my violet. And there we go. All right, so there's are very quickly done, but still pretty good looking. I'm pretty happy with this overall. Like, there's not a lot to complain about here. Uh, Rainbow Bridge. So we'll complete the inside and stuff, but I think it's time to jump off and uh, get going. So the primary concepts that we used for our Heimdall, we looked really heavily at the Gene Foster Mighty Thor run for a lot of his look and design. Um, and in that comic run specifically, he's super beefy. He's very bulky. One second. Um, so that's what gave him those, those epically like huge pythons that he's rocking with. Horfun's a big sword. It takes a lot of strength. You know, he's got to turn the keys, turn on the Bifrost. He's got a lot of work to do. Um, and then for those asking about Zola, it is, the face is actually a 3D sculpted plate. It goes on the inside and there is um, some translucent plastic that goes along with it. If you want to learn more about that, you should definitely tune in to Mini Stravaganza when it gets rescheduled because Dallas has a whole thing on that. Um, and he's going to be going over some hobby tips and tricks on how to paint it and get the best results out of it and all that stuff. So it'll be one you want to tune into. But a very cool uh, miniature, really excited about that video and the fact that we got to reveal him. And of course, um, definitely inspired a lot more by the modern interpretations of Zola from various Marvel media. He's not the, uh, everything in the classic era was so small, so short. It was, uh, you know, everyone was like under six foot because at the time that was, it was pretty tall. So we, we did take some liberties just to make him a more exciting and imposing figure looked at uh, several of the recent animated shows, 
some of the more modern comic interpretations from various out, uh, from various runs, and we decided to like crank him up a little bit, give him that imposing. He's a big screen TV man. He's not a little screen TV man. Dallas just showed up too. He's whispering away. Things are happening. That's fine. You ain't got to what? Talk about me? You don't got to whisper, no. Not at all. Everyone's here. Everyone just wants to hang out. It's the first stream back. First stream back. So obviously what I'm doing here, uh, I got sidetracked talking about inspirations and stuff. Um, but I figured that I would show a more MCU-inspired Heimdall today. So we're going to be giving him the gold armor, the brown leathers, and we'll be painting him a bit more like uh, Idris Elba, who was a fantastic, made a fantastic Heimdall. So. So much whispering. So many secrets. So this is just Viking gold from the scale range. We're just gonna use this on all of the armor plating. Then we'll go back through and give it a quick wash. And do some highlights and we'll get a pretty nice looking worn gold effect. Nice and shimmery. Action, but Heimdall, one of those characters that actually was worked on and developed and designed initially way back when we started the first batch of characters. And for various reasons, he didn't wind up uh, making it into the game until a lot later. So we got to go back and kind of a lot later on, look at the initial designs and everything. And by that point, we were like, oh, we should change some things here. His, uh, his overall um, design beats the re-rolls and the fact that he has the forefend and he's got the super big push on his uh, spender attack, horfend, all that stuff was very much in the initial design. Um, But there were some uh, there were some adjustments made based on stuff that we learned as the game had developed and progressed and stuff. So it was kind of nice to be able to go back with fresh eyes and be like, "Oh, really thought this was going to work, and it totally doesn't. Let's change that, or let's work on this." I'm happy to say, for the most part, though, the Heimdall that everyone got is basically the Heimdall that was play tested all those years ago with that initial batch, and he's definitely one of those characters that. You know, I think a lot of people have identified as uh, somewhat of a linchpin in the Asgardian playstyle. If you're looking for certain things, especially with that dice fixing and rerolling ability, it's a huge deal. Um, he's a big support piece that is Asgard affiliated, rather than taking like a Shuri or something like that, or a Zemo. If you're going to stick close by Zemo for his little rerolls. Uh, so the gold that I'm using is Viking gold, aptly named, from Scale 75. So it's part of their metal and alchemy range. And yeah, it's a really nice, it's a very great gold. It's got really good coverage. It's really smooth. It's one of my go-tos. <laughs> In fact, all of, really all of the golds from Scale I've had, I've had a lot of, a lot of love for. They're pretty solid. getting a little intense on the boots here. I think there's part of it that I want to paint black, but it's easy to go over and do again. So obviously in the comic design, his little boot coverings are not metallic, but, <coughs> excuse me, um, once we get these shaded and highlighted, they're gonna look just perfectly natural as metal greaves than as like 
fabric or leather, leather boot coverings, booty socks. I don't know. There's a name for that, but I don't know what it is. All right, let's see. Wow. Get under here. Around what? Yeah, ask away. What do you think? Oh, I'm sorry. What do you think that Um. So I'm mostly just letting my wet palette do the thinning for me in this in this case. Um. Really, you just want in most base coat applications, like you're really just looking for the paint to be loose, and so it flows really nice. Um. So like a quick test is just run it over your thumb and. You can see how I'm still getting like really nice coverage, but it's not clumpy and it's coming off and I could do some really like nice squiggles and stuff with it. Um, that That's really what you're looking for when it comes to like a good base coat thinning. If you're doing a wash or something like that, you're obviously gonna add more to it. <coughs> but every paint, every paint is different. Um, you know, even the same paint from the same manufacturer is gonna be a little different. Like here, this brown that I'm now using is a little thinner than I'd want it to be. And again, I, all I did was put it on my wet palette. So my wet palette's a little wetter than normal. But that's okay. I can just do a couple more coats of this um, to kick it out. But you can see how it's not quite as solid a coverage. As normal, this is more of what I would look at at a wash consistency. And we can probably play with this too, just because we did that Zenith highlight. So we'll get those nice highs and lows from the Zenith Prime. Um, but most of the time, like the easiest ratio is get your brush, like just dip your brush in the water and then mix it into your paint. Um, so the dampness of the brush, which is a classic saying, if you've done hobby for any amount of time, you've probably heard somebody say dampness of the brush. It's all you need. It, it's true. It, I mean, a lot of the times the dampness of the brush will take you all the way you need for like a good base coat. Um, if you notice your paint is really thick and it's not running off the brush super well, add a little bit more water. It's very easy to thin a thick paint, but it's really hard to thick a thin paint, as Dallas likes to say. Um, same thing with like seasoning, right? You, can, you can't fix over seasoning as easily as you can't under seasoning. So just give it some tests, try it out, and you'll start to learn like out of the range of paints that you have and the ones that you go back to a lot. You know, this paint needs a little bit more thinning. This paint needs very little thinning. Um, but you kind of just have to experiment with it. Or you can just dive in head first and fix it on the fly, which is just as fun, you know. Uh, the upcoming Captain America is definitely more of a nod towards the classic Captain America but not exactly a direct representation of any kind of like specific age. Um, I think once people get to take a look at his rules and his play style and all that, where he fits in with the game, um, it's a very fun interpretation of Steve Rogers and you know his journey throughout the time. Um, spoiler alert, I guess or special preview. Uh, this is Cap before the Avengers, so that kind of gives you a pretty good indication of like what his overall, you know, feel and era, if you will, is supposed to be. But um, certainly not, not something we went into where like we're picking this very specific, you know, Silver Age, Golden Age, kind of version and going all in. It was more of an homage um, of a couple of different eras of Captain America, a celebration of the man, the myth, the legend, Steve Rogers. <clears throat> uh, Malekith plays aggressively in the game. I think I can tell you that and probably not surprise anybody, but he is... He's very aggressive. Anybody who brings a bat tiger to a battle, um, probably not interested in hanging out in the back and, you know, not getting their hands dirty. So, 
I can't say too, too much more on the accursed because uh, definitely it's something you'll want to tune into. Mini Strav 4 to check out all of the reveals and all the cool stuff. I know Dallas is going to be doing some painting streams and tutorials covering how to get the best out of your Malekith and everything. So if you're interested in how you're going to handle painting your own tiger for your shelf, that's uh, going to be a great, it's going to be a great couple of streams. And it'll have lots of good information for any time you're painting really any kind of animal, creature, or beast, of which there are a few in Marvel Crisis Protocol currently. And Marvel is not uh, a universe devoid of more furry things. So lots of different animal companions, characters covered in fur, all that good stuff. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Uh, brr, brr, brr. Okay, we're just going to grab some Holder Blue. Yeah. Back to that. Uh, the new mini strap or the rescheduled mini strap again, so we don't have an exact timeline on yet. We are working, and by we, I mean BK and Summer are working very diligently to finalize the dates <clears throat> because we are going to be showing off some new stuff. We have to create new assets. We have to go through our licensing partners and get their eyes on them and all of that stuff. So there's a little bit of extra planning that goes into it. And we want to make sure that everything is ready for a fantastic event. Um, it's going to be just as exciting, if not more exciting, than what it would have been if we hadn't unfortunately had to cancel. But, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Oh, gosh. Totally missed these little bits here. For shame. What am I even doing with my life? She's a mo. You know what? You strappy straps are going to be gold too. Because I think that you're armor and not leather. And what I say goes. Because I'm the artist now. Get back to this. So I'm just doing this holder blue over the places that I want to paint black because it's going to give me that nice rich undertone for my black. So it's going to make it look more like black leather, kind of a shiny black leather. Because let's be honest, if you're the first person anyone sees at the doorway to the, the uh, realm undying, the realm eternal, that's what it is. I'll get it right eventually, summer. Shh. You gotta have the shiny leather. You can't be you can't be running around in like dull, you know, dull used up leather. That's just it's embarrassing. <laughs> embarrassing. You don't have to tell me if we have any other like questions from the chat. Uh the recently revealed Captain America is not just Captain America like the core box one. It's a brand new version of Captain America. So he does have a unique name on his stat card um, as far as like his title and sub name and everything. For those who remember Black Widow, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., same idea there. Um, okay, okay, okay. Where do we want to go next? I think we got our blue, we got all our gold. So we're pretty good there. I think we're gonna move on to a whole lot of washes. A whole lot of washes. Okay. So not that one. I'm just gonna grab some brown wash. And we're just going to really slop it on onto our leathers. And for the golds, I think I'm going to use a violet wash or an amethyst because yellow and purple are such lovely friends. And I really love the way that purple 
wash looks on gold. It makes them look really rich and lived in, like they've been worn. It adds a great amount of age and a little bit of regalness, I think, to the whole look. But you could easily, just as easily use a brown wash to get that more classic, kind of richly polished look. All up to your preferences. However, if you've never tried gold with a purple wash, you absolutely should. You might just fall in love with it like I did. Okay, let's see. I don't really need to do the fur, but let's just do the fur for good measure. So I'm gonna dry brush some colors over top, but this will just really work into those nooks and crevices and crannies of the fur and help get that extra contrast that we want out of it. Should be real nice. And you'll see I'm really slapping this wash on. I want it to be really heavy, um, pretty thick. <laughs> Trying to avoid like heavy pooling as much as possible, but by the same token, I'm not as worried about it because if you look at worn leather, you know, there are those like big chunks <coughs> of everything. Is there any reason why the new Red Skull Box is the one? Because it's too far out. That was like an extra special look at the future. So it is not, <coughs> it is not time for that one to be on any web stores. That's the, that's the simple reason. Sometimes you get a look so far into the future that it takes a little while for the present to catch up. That's just science. Okay. Let's set him down and let's find us some purple, maybe, violet ink. The one thing that I apparently forgot to bring, maybe we'll just make it up. All right. <laughs> doop, doop. Well, maybe we'll just wash them with brown, I don't know. Ah, found it, nailed it. All right, great. Take a little bit of our ink tense violet. water, a little medium. There we go. All right, we're just going to go in and slap this violet ink all over our golds. While our wash is dry, we'll go in and we'll start doing the skins. Mr. Heimdall's beautiful, beautiful flesh. I might really quick, because my ink isn't gripping as much as I want it to. I'm going to add just a little bit of medium in there. And that'll hopefully make it stick a bit better. One of the things you want to watch out for when you're using inks is that if you use too much water and not enough medium, your ink won't grab quite as well as you want it to. So you can see hopefully maybe here how now that I added that little bit of medium to it, it should just adhering better to the surface of the mini and it's not pooling quite as much. And this is actually Maybe a little bit too much, but that's okay because we can play with it. So it's a little bit of a like trial and error again, you know, like many things are to figure out the ideal ratio to get the effect that you want. I want this, I want this violet ink to pool into the crevices and the cracks, but I also want it to kind of stretch and not run away from all of the surfaces of the mini. So I'm, I'm 
looking for something that's very similar to a pre-bottled wash in a way. Um, you know, if you buy like, if you have a flesh wash or an armor wash or something like that in your arsenal, that pre-mixed kind of wash, you know, one of the benefits of those are they're supposed to be formulated ideally to where they do what I'm trying to make this ink do already. So they mostly pool into the recesses, but they do tint and color the entirety of the surface that they're put over. And that's why when you use a wash, you always have to go back typically and reclaim the areas with your base coat. And then you have to go back through and do highlights from there. You can just base coat wash and call it done, but you're gonna wind up with a much darker and kind of dingier final, final looking miniature than you will if you go back through and do the highlighting and stuff and build up those contrasts between the shadows and the highlights. Because um, shadows alone will give you a lot of good contrast, but adding highlights and reclaiming those places where the light's really gonna glint and shine um, is gonna take the miniature to that next level and it's gonna do so pretty easily, honestly. Like, you can get really crazy with your highlights, you can be pretty minimal with your highlights, but any amount of highlighting you do after getting a really nice dark contrast into those shadows is gonna make a huge difference. It's gonna have a big impact. That's why I always talk about, you know, on streams and stuff, when we're doing painting and hobbying, one of the best things you can do if you want to kind of like up your painting game is simply look at how you're pushing your contrast. And typically, nine times out of ten, if you just work your contrast more, you'll wind up getting that next level of look, you know. Um, Now, if you're going to dive into like the worthy or something, your level is probably at a point to where it's not all contrast, but I think for the vast majority of folks who, you know, like myself or Mr. Pagani or a lot of the folks in the studio, we're just painting because we enjoy it and it's a really good way to relax and bring life to these little characters that we then want to get on the tabletop. We're not painting for a big competition. We're not painting to claim our own Odin trophy from the worthy. We want things to look really cool and tell that story on the table. Um, but we're not, we're not going full art on any of these pieces, typically. Oh, and I should probably do Horfund while we're here, just because. Just because. I kind of forgot about that but we do want these pieces to be gold as well, so I might as well knock them out of the way. Make it really easy. Summer hasn't told me that there's any questions in chat, so I'm just kind of assuming that me being completely nose down into this Heimdall because I'm super digging it is okay here. I'm out of practice with my painting and looking at chat at the same place. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. I'm doing all right today. Thank you, Todd Polite. As you can tell, I'm pretty froggy still. Um, so I apologize if my voice is a little, a little rough. Still getting over the after effects of some gross illness. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of questions. Like, there was a Blackbird that was shown in that amazing uh, X-Men trailer, but I don't think we ever claimed anything about terrain being part of it. You never know, though. That Dallas Kemp, he loves his terrain. He's got plans within plans. Half the time, I feel like he makes stuff just so he can be like, see, we should make this for reals, for everyone. He's very egalitarian that way. He's always thinking about, I was going to say the little man, like Homer Stokes, but I don't know if that reference would date me horribly. It'd make Dallas really excited, though. I think Dallas would, would be okay. The 
little oh brother where art thou discussion but we do we do have more terrain in the works we got lots more characters in the works you know, we got so many cool things it's always fun to get to show off all the stuff you've been working on Weird terrain. Ooh, well. I will I will take that one back to the to the Dark Council and we will start talking about weird terrain. How weird can we get? I think Dallas can get pretty weird, honestly, when it comes to terrain. That boy. That boy loves terrain. He is all about it. the handle of Horfund with that black watch. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, let's just see if I want to hit that with some more contrast to make it look more like this side. Cool. So already you can see, I think, how as this violet wash kind of dries, how it's given this really warm, rich, antique look to the gold. Mm, it's just so good. So good. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to getting our Heimdall skin tone painted. Start. Here, yeah, it seems all right. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix up some brown. We're just gonna get a quick, kind of loose base coat on. And then from here, I'm just gonna start playing with different undertones and shades and highlights. One of the biggest things when painting any skin tone is to know that everybody, everybody's skin tone has the same kind of warmth underneath it, right? We've all got the exact same veins and capillaries and arteries and all that stuff right under our skin. So while the melanin does affect the external appearance, the undertones all kind of play within the same realm. And what that means is, is that, you know, you don't want you don't want your highlights for a non-Caucasian skin tone to lack that warmth. Um, we're all flesh and blood creatures, so we all have the same, effectively the same coloring beneath us. And so if you want to get really good looking and incredible skin tones, no matter the type, you want to think about that, that fact, the fact that as you highlight, as you kind of push that contrast, you're going to want to mix in those warmer, like peach, red, reddish, pinkish tones, because ultimately that's what's showing through our skin at all times, because that underneath our largest organ in, it's all the same stuff. You know, we're all the same, we're all the same general contents, we just come in differently designed bags. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I will need to grab, not warm enough. That's copper, that'll just make them look really weird. Let's not use copper. We're not metal underneath ourselves. That'd be weird. Hmm. You're metal? Are you metal? Are you a robot? I think technically that would make you an eternal on a Marvel day. They were robots, apparently. Some kind of weird robot. I don't know. This will work. I might add a little bit more ruddiness to it, but...
So, let's see. Yeah, that's all right. So let's just make sure I'm on camera here. Let's come back through. We'll start knocking in some highlights here. And on these big muscly fellas, anyone that's got a lot of like high muscle definition, I like to usually what I like to do is go through do my base, sketch in some highlights, and then do like a nice thin glaze over the top, and that kind of ties everything together, and that works really well for skin tones because you have all of these like weird, you know, you look at your skin, or maybe I'm the only one who just stares intently at my skin all day looking for all these weird blemishes and like different colorations. You know, there's like, there's green and purple and red and, man, like, we're just, it's just gross. Once you get, once you really get into it and you start looking, like every color of the rainbow. But the point being is that you can kind of do this highlighting step. And then once you go back through and you do your glaze, so like what I'm going to do is I'm going to take kind of a red, a red brown, like a chestnut, chestnutty kind of glaze and run that back over the skin tone. It'll tie everything together, meet everything out, and it'll start to look a lot more like real skin because you'll have those very different like areas of color. You'll get that kind of multi-tonal facet, but it'll all still meld together because it has that, that one transparent layer that ties it all together, right? So again, it'll look much more like skin because that's how our skin works. We have all of these different things going on underneath our skin and skin is effectively translucent. You know, skin has different levels of opacity. And so a lot of what we see when we're looking at flesh tone is what's effectively underneath the surface of our skin being colored by the transparent, their translucent layer of our skin. It's pretty cool, actually. Like, pretty wild. And these are all like things that as you learn, they definitely help make you a more technical and better painter. And you'll start looking at headshots and Google images of things you want to paint and you start to notice how colors are such lies. <laughs> They're so dependent on so many different factors that nothing truly is the color that you think it is. It's typically a combination of a lot of different colors and really great artists, you know, really amazing artists and pieces of art are the ones that really capitalize on the way that, you know, the more realistic you want something to look, the more realistic you have to make your colors, which means kind of being able to see and analyze and learn how these things affect each other, what they wind up doing, what undertones are there and how things work. Like really beautiful, super dark, dark ebony skin has a lot of purple to it because that skin's translucent layers is effectively tinting the red, the natural shared redness of our you know, blood and capillaries and all that stuff. And it's turning it purple. And that's where you get that beautiful, that beautiful looking skin. So, hair is a lot of the same way. You know, you can stare at somebody's hair forever and ever, and you start to see all these different tones and colors and the way that the light affects it. If it's on the crown of your head or, you know, falling to your shoulders and, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. We always talk about how black is not actually black. It's what it's highlighted by. White is not actually white. It's what it's shaded by. All these different things that you could start paying attention to and the more that you put them in to your process, the better and more realistic results you're going to get. Even if you're going for something unnatural or something, you know, comic booky knowing and understanding how those colors work will help you pick better colors. It affects everything. So it's always really good to kind of think about. 
how that stuff is going on. So. Okay, let's just do, let's get Horfin kind of painted up here really quick because we're running out of time. So we'll get, we'll get Heimdall to a point to where he's tabletop ready and then there'd just be some extra steps to go on him, but that's okay. All right. Let's get his, oh, let's get his facial hair done. I'm just going to go back to my black. Let's just quickly knock in, knock in his sweet beard, Viking beard. Color around a little bit. Let that zenith do some of the work for us. There we go. Uh, burr, burr, burr. Where do I want to go next? I do really want to. I'm going to hit his skin with a really quick flesh wash. Just to kind of tie all of that highlighting I just did together. Hopefully you'll see kind of like magic. It'll really bring that flesh to life. You know, and part of the reason that this works so well is that a lot of the colors that I were using, because the skin tone um, and the browns that I were using weren't very warm, they were pretty cold, but the flesh tone has a lot of red to it, or this flesh wash has a lot of red to it. So it's gonna add that warmth in that we were talking about. So critical to making a really good looking flesh tone is that warmth, you know? Only corpses are cold. And Heimdall, he's alive as anybody. So you can, hopefully you can see on camera how much of a difference even this one really quick flesh wash does to tying all those colors together. And now we have this really nice this really nice looking skin tone that feels very real and alive and warm and kind of ties everything together. It looks really good with the browns for the leathers and all that stuff. I'm really happy with where this is turning out. Okay, uh, just really quick. I'm gonna grab some, what is this, shining gold? Something gold? Dwarven gold. I'm gonna go to some dwarven gold. I'm just gonna quickly hit some Areas of highlight. Just to kind of show you how you can. So our amethyst wash obviously like dulls. Pulls our gold down, but using a little bit of this brighter dwarven gold. You can come in quickly do some little spot highlights on the horns and stuff. And just pick out some areas where we really want that light to shine and give it that pop. Maybe over here where Purple got a little too thick. We can come back in with our base color. Just kind of blend that back out. A little thick. We could also leave that and just have it be kind of like a little artsy spot of color. Don't worry too much about the feet we talked about. Not too many people pay attention to the legs. Try to remember what your best friend's shoes look like from the other day, you probably can't do it unless they wear really garish shoes. We don't pay attention to the bottom half of people. In normal circumstances, we're very face forward focused. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. We've really got that contrast pushed a little bit. Come up here and pop that out. Pop that out. There. Make those little like moon buckles pull a little bit more. Sweet. All right, and then we can do something similar with the brown. Let's come in and find these little areas to pop out. Kind of like these high edges, although we were helped by that because I hadn't intended to do anything as a wash, but that's just kind of how it turned out. Because our paint initially for our base coat was thin. Then we can hit these little areas here. quick are there plans to do more alternate details in the kits like maybe capturing it um like we talk about anytime we do options for example i think the latest one is super giant she's got her hood up her hood down it all comes down to you know uh time payoff all that stuff Captain America's triangle shield is definitely very iconic of a very specific Captain America. Um, and so I think, you know, just having the triangle shield be on whatever doesn't quite fit the bill. Um, and so in the case of Steve Rogers, Captain America, which is the one that was shown, we talked about earlier, it's an homage to kind of the classic Captain Americas from different ages. It's not... It's not specifically silver, it's not specifically gold. And so, we kind of made the decision to stick with the modern shield because, you know, I feel like that triangle, that iconic triangle shield is, it says that this is this cap. There is one Captain America that carries that shield and that is kind of the end of it, you know? So. Okay, we have three minutes left. Oh, is Summer gonna let me do it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will, Summer. I'll let you. It's, my day it's our first day back. I didn't finish the back of the rainbow, so it won't be quite perfect, but that's okay. We can do this pretty quick, I think. Do do do, especially if we cheat. And we won't do all the colors. We're not going to do all the colors of the rainbow. We'll just do some of the colors of the rainbow, you see. That green in there. Pull the green in there. A little blue in there, and then a little purple in there, like that. Where's my violet? Actually, I gotta just use this. Maybe, maybe it'll work the same. Close enough. Oh yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Run this up the side like that, and then I bring a. Oh, I did not. That's okay. Grab some of this black wash. Hit the sword really quick. I think there's so many fun things you could do on the sword, too, if you wanted to. Like, I really want to take some time and try doing a bunch of different, like, colored glazes on the sword. So the sword's got, like, the rainbow reflection to it. That would look pretty sick. Pretty sick. Kind of like blend in some of this brighter highlight. Give that sword a little bit of texture. And from there, say, oh look, we totally missed. This will bother me forever if I don't fix it. Let's tap that in. Do that. Blend that out. 
Come here, little Heimdall. Shabloosh. There we go. Just have to finish the back of that rainbow, but there we go. So not too bad for like one hour. Let's see if I can get in camera here. Does that look good? Just tell me, Summer. Right there. It's there. Here we go. 201, one complete Heimdall, mostly. Finish the rainbow bridge, you'll be good. But, all right, well, hopefully you're inspired to paint your own all seen, uh, not all knowing, but all seen, the all seen eyes of Heimdall. Uh, in whatever version you prefer, whether you prefer the classic comic version, or if you want to do something a little more modern and MCU inspired, lots of options, an amazing miniature, so much great detail. Super fun to paint. Very excited to do a couple more of him in some different schemes and everything like that. Also an amazing miniature on the table. Be sure to join us tomorrow. Dallas Kemp's going to be back at 1 p.m. Pacific. And, of course, don't miss the special gameplay stream, Mini Stravaganza Reveal Makeup, that will be featuring Will Pagani and Andrew Derson. That will also be on Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific. Till next time, I'll see you next Tuesday. Have a good day. Be good to each other. Happy to be back. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.